people, I'm Ginny Metherill, I'm a fourth generation witch. It's getting close to that time of year again, when Christmas is coming. Although people often say that Christmas is actually a Christian festival, us traditional witches know it to be something else. And so this is my pagan Christmas. This video is sponsored by the wonderful Purple Garden, so should you consider giving yourself a little Christmas present, I can thoroughly recommend this website, but more on that later. Let's have a look at what I mean by a pagan Christmas. So every Christmas morning people wake up, don't they, and they open their stockings which have been left there by Father Christmas, the indubitable Father Christmas. Wonderful, isn't it? I love stockings. They're actually my favourite part of Christmas. I love thinking about them. I love going out and looking for things that I might want to put in them. And I particularly love just Father Christmas. The Americans, of course, call him Santa Claus. And this is an Americanism. It comes from their own mythology. There is a St Nicholas in Northern and Eastern Europe. Germans love St Nicholas and so do the Scandinavian countries. However, the Britons were always about Father Christmas and that is what we call him. And this is because it's taken from the Anglo-Saxon old man winter. He was considered some form of deity that holds sway over the winter months. And his time of year was, of course, Yule the winter solstice, which is when we worship Christmas. So we can actually say that Father Christmas, Santa Claus, is a directly pagan influence. And of course he is. Anybody who goes around flying about the place and spreading largesse as they go with a bunch of reindeer, <laughs> they've got to be some sort of pagan deity, haven't they? If you have a stocking on Christmas morning, then you're following the ancient Anglo-Saxon tradition of old man winter. So as I said previously, this video is sponsored by Purple Garden and I cannot recommend highly enough you buying yourself a little Christmas present. These are the people to go to. I personally have used them. So Purple Garden basically connects you with a huge array of talented psychic astrology and tarot advisors. And these advisors are ready to lighten, empower and inspire you. And they're all verified and voted for by people such as yourself. So all you have to do is create an account and then you're able to choose from the hundreds of advisors that are online right now. These tarot, psychic and astrology advisors are particularly good at answering questions such as do he or she or they think about you? What's next for your love life? Do you need to know how to make your relationships stronger? Purple Garden will have an advisor just for you. There's no sugarcoating here, just the clarity that you need to make the decision that's right for you. Purple Garden even offers palm readings, oracle guidance, dream analysis and angel insights. So there's a huge variety for you to choose from. And you can connect with them through either live chats, messaging, for example, video calls or telephone calls. It's up to you. Each Purple Garden advisor has recorded a brief video message. And this gives you a really good indication about whether you should choose them. The URL for the site is on screen now and I've put it in the description below. If you think that Purple Garden would be a great Christmas present for you or somebody else, do click on the link and use my promo code Ginny Metherill. You will get your first deposit of $10 matched by Purple Garden if you use my promo code Ginny Methrel. So do just click on the link in the description below. I particularly enjoyed using Purple Garden because I, though I am a psychic and I can do my own psychic reading, so I don't need other people to tell me, I don't really know anything about astrology. I don't understand it. So it was wonderful to go to Purple Gardens and use one of their astrologers. I was asking them about several questions during my life, of which I know the answers because you know, it gets a bit boring when you know your future the whole time. So I try not to ask too much. 
However, this astrologer came up with the actual goods and I was really pleased that they understand what I was talking about and they gave me the correct answer. Anyway, let me know how you get on with today's sponsor, Purple Garden. So, after opening your stockings, will you not come downstairs and gaze at the beauteousness of the Christmas tree? The Christmas tree, of course, was brought over to the UK by the Germans because they were very Teutonic and had Christmas trees. However, before they bought Christmas trees inside, they decorated them outside and they were decorated with presents, fruits and nuts and sweeties. The British embraced the tradition of the Christmas tree with great aplomb and took it over mightily. And I think we're only second place now to the Americans in our utter worship of it. And if this is not more pagan, I don't know what is. And even if we didn't, decorate a tree and bring it inside to our homes before the 1800s, we certainly brought in a lot of greenery. Greenery coming into our homes is very much a pagan tradition. It is particularly part of the Druidic faith. So mistletoe was cut down at the winter solstice and bought in and held up above the doorways in your home. Now this was of course for protection but also because mistletoe is beautiful is it not? And when you kissed underneath it you were expected to take one of the beautiful berries off the bush and discard it because that means you've taken a little bit of the mistletoe magic. It makes your kiss eternal. I mean mistletoe of course is one of the most sacred of the druid's herbs and they did cut it down on the full moon of midwinter with their golden sickles to decorate their altars and use in their rituals and we brought it into our homes in honour for that. Underneath the Christmas tree, you will see a lovely pile of presents. Presents at this time was a custom that's been going on for possibly as long as we have been human. It was the time when the lords of the manor or the overriding kings of the nation would give presents to their subjects. And so these were normally gifts of food such as nuts, seeds, hunks of meat which means that you would use them to have a feast. And oh my goodness me, is that not Christmas dinner? A massive time for a feast. Feasting at Christmas is really one of its main attractions. Henry VIII, when he first came to the throne, spent three quarters of his tax income. So that's a vast amount. I mean, we must be looking at millions on feeding 10,000 people at feasts over the Christmas period. It was a tradition of the time. Uh, Stock meat, so meat from lambs or meat from sheep or cows or pigs, was a rarity. There was, of course, wild game. And I'm sure we all remember that rather wonderful nursery rhymes with four and 20 blackbirds baked in the pie. The Tudors were incredibly good at theatre dining and they pretty much invented that theatrical dining experience. And so the four and 20 blackbirds, they obviously weren't baked into the pie, they were just put into a dish with a pie crust put on top. And when it was taken out, they flew out. Once you've opened your Christmas presents, you might well walk out and go and listen to some carol singers. Yeah, carol singers. Yeah, deeply, deeply pagan. The Puritans hated carol singing and decided that if a woman sang carols, she was definitely a witch. They were based on a lot of folk songs and so therefore they would have incorporated the pagan traditions that were everyday at that time. So carols, although now we have them as Christian songs, they definitely weren't to start with. And finally I'm going to talk about the holly wreath, that wonderful piece of decoration on your door. 
The holly wreath has long been claimed by the Celts and the Druids as their own. The Romany nation hold it that you should have your holly wreath containing both prickly and smooth holly because this ensures that there is marital harmony within your house. If you just have prickly holly in your wreath, that means that the man is going to rule the roost for the rest of the year. And if you have smooth holly, it's the woman has the trousers in this household. Domestic harmony, of course, calls for balance. And so we should be looking for prickly and smooth holly in our wreath. The wreath itself is a warding symbol. The round circle is a round circle of protection. And you putting it against your door gives you the protection from the nastier elements that are out there. The holly itself is a protective and this Holly wreath is therefore a true charm on your home. You have been celebrating a pagan Christmas throughout your lives and that fills me with great joy. Let me know what other traditions you do in the comments below. I really enjoy reading your comments so please do leave me one. My Patreon coving meeting is coming up. So if you join Patreon now, there's still a chance for you to come to the coven meeting. I'm not gonna be here for the next couple of weeks as I am on holiday, excitingly. Uh, singing and arguing with my family, no doubt. Can't wait, it's going to be great. And in the meantime, have a very happy pagan Christmas. So I will see you in a couple of weeks. <laughs>